Yellow Productions presents, hey, the intro just said that, 15 reasons to go to Hong Kong. I'm Chris, this is a live stream, and in this live stream, I'll be telling you why you should spend your hard-earned money to travel to Hong Kong. I just got back, and so we're gonna be talking about the food, the skyscrapers, the energy, the public transport, the neon signs. There are tons of reasons to visit Hong Kong. So if you're on the live stream, make sure to ask questions, leave a comment, plenty of interaction, and uh, towards the end, I'll be doing a giveaway for some fancy yellow production socks so stay tuned for those you got to be on the live stream to win all right so the first uh, reason first number one reason to go to Hong Kong is for the skyscrapers yes Hong Kong has more skyscrapers than any other city in the world Hong Kong has over 8,000 buildings that are more than 14 stories tall and they're built in crazy places on the side of a big mountain Hong Kong Island is very mountainous and so these skyscrapers go up the mountain it barely looks like these things should actually work and fit up there, but in fact they do. It is pretty crazy. Um, and it also has a really neat nighttime show. Every night at 8 p.m. there's a nighttime show. This nighttime show at 8 p.m. most of the buildings in Hong Kong get together and have lights and things like that. It's pretty neat and they have music and they do it every night. Um, and also it's pretty interesting high-rise architecture. So if we if we put up this little picture here, hey, let's see, I'm trying to work these these new num fangled overlays I've got here. If you're on YouTube, you can see them. And here's some of the interesting buildings that are in Hong Kong. And you'll see not all of them are straight. Uh, Hong Kong, um, they're really big on feng shui. That is good energy that's used with buildings. And so feng shui makes people do pretty interesting things with their buildings. It's a pretty distinctive skyline and really just a fun part of about walking around Hong Kong is absolutely looking up at all the buildings. Though something that's kind of interesting about Hong Kong, if you're on Hong Kong Island, um, the buildings are all new, they're big, they're modern, and you won't worry about air conditioners all that much. But if you're on uh, the Kowloon side, well there, you might be walking around and feel it's raining, although it's not raining, and what's really happening is you're getting dripped on by the um, like air conditioners that come out of those tall buildings yes that happened to us quite a bit uh, and so that tells you it can be it can be pretty hot in Hong Kong but if you love skyscrapers definitely that is a reason to visit Hong Kong uh, Mick Yarid's on the live stream he says he's really looking forward to the Hong Kong videos as we'll be there for eight nights early next March I should point out I've got like 15 other videos on Hong Kong and a lot of these points I'm gonna brush on here in this video I've got detailed videos about a lot of these points you can find the link in the description to my Hong Kong playlist. It's also linked as a card to this video as well. Uh, Marie joined in on Facebook. Welcome, Marie. Uh, Keita joined in from Portugal. I probably mispronounced your name, uh, but thanks for dialing in. I will say hi to Topher for you. Um, Alex asked, hi, Chris, how are you? What was your favorite experience visiting Hong Kong? My favorite experience is definitely, I'll be talking about it in number four, and that experience is definitely the food. I love the food. The food in Hong Kong is amazing, which is number four. So we'll get to that in a moment. Um, Alonzo Brooks says they're planning to go to Hong Kong in late September. Perfect time for you. Chin Mei asks if the light show is like the Fremont Street experience. Hmm. It is nothing like the Fremont Street experience. For those who don't know what that is, in Las Vegas, there's a street called Fremont Streets in downtown Las Vegas, and they've got all these lights on the... Mm, ceiling. They've built this like light ceiling uh, and so no in Hong Kong it's more like those buildings the buildings here that I'm showing you in this video that if you're on YouTube you can see they all have lights that they display actually we'll see it in number two but you watch this light show from across the harbor it's it's a very interesting show and uh, there's nothing like it and it's one of those where you're like how did they get so many buildings to coordinate this light show most places like New York City they like the business owners would be too serious to light up their building and put fancy lights for some silly light time show but in Hong Kong they like their lights and I like them too 
Uh, all right, so let's go to number two. The second reason to visit Hong Kong is for the view. Yes, the view. And uh, here is the view from the peak. The view from the peak is epic. The peak is the top of Hong Kong Island. Uh, and you can take this thing called the peak tram up there. From up there, you really feel like you're on top of the world. It's this like total surreal place. Uh, they've also got this building called Sky 100. It's one of the newest buildings in Hong Kong. It has an observatory on the hundredth floor, which is really impressive. I've got Sky 100 has a video in my playlist about Hong Kong, um, but Sky 100 in that building, it also has uh, the world's highest Ritz-Carlton. Like you can get rooms that are on like the 90 something floor. And if for some reason you don't want to pay to go into the observatory, well, you can go to the Ritz-Carlton bar or restaurant and basically see that exact same view for free um, so you can consider that as well they built this really tall building because it's where the um, the train from China comes in they just uh, are finishing this high-speed rail that'll run from Beijing all the way to Hong Kong it'll take eight hours to get there but it'll run right underneath the sky 100 building uh, and then of course Hong Kong Harbor um, from the side of Kowloon so Hong Kong right Hong Kong Island Kowloon there's this harbor in the middle and the harbor itself just has these really neat boats that go through it, the Star Ferry, um, and it's one of just those classic world views you have to go see, much like going to see Times Square or anything like that. Uh, Dustin on Facebook joined in, so is Greg. Um, let's see the comments on uh, YouTube, some notes from uh, Chicago and Australia, welcome, and San Diego in the house. I love my EQ, says, about to go solo traveling, any advice? Where are you going solo traveling, EQ? Are you going to Hong Kong? And Katia asks, are you planning on going to Macau? We actually did go to Macau. It'll be one of my points coming up. And so we've also got uh, at least one new Macau video coming up. I've also got some Macau videos in that Hong Kong playlist, but I'll definitely be talking about Macau as well. For those who aren't super familiar, right, Hong Kong used to be a British colony and Macau used to be a Portuguese colony. Macau is now the only place in China that you can gamble and so it's basically become the Las Vegas of the East. It's one of the best day trips to take from Hong Kong so we'll be talking all about that with a bit. Um, and uh, let's see, Leslie says uh, she's shocked that I don't have over a hundred subs. I assume you mean a hundred thousand subs but yes a hundred thousand subs. The channel's awesome and informative. Thank you Leslie. I appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words and thanks for joining in. Alonzo says What's the best place to go to get some good street food? That's a great question. And um, there's not a lot of places for street food anymore in Hong Kong because Hong Kong sort of, right, mega high rise city, try to be clean. They've really closed down a lot of their street food places. Um, in Hong Kong, on Hong Kong Island, near the central mid-levels escalator, there's a street that has some street food right there. That's a pretty good one if you're on Hong Kong. If you are in Kowloon, Kowloon, the other side of the harbor, then your two best bets there, number one is the Temple Street Night Market, and number two is around the Mong Kok Station. Uh, they're not really street food, but certainly stalls, restaurants that are opened up to the outside. Uh, and then also, um, when I get to the market section, uh, there's another market called, um, it's like Sham Shui Po. I'm sure I mispronounced that, but that has some pretty good street food as well. Those are about your only bets in Hong Kong because they've really tried to clean it up. Uh, and on Facebook, Greg uh, Benusa has joined in, and he says he's sitting with my dad watching the live stream for the first time. So awesome. Uh, hey, Greg, and hey, dad, welcome to the live stream. Um, all right, let's go on to number three. The third reason to visit Hong Kong is for the craziness. There are so many people in Hong Kong in such a small place. Hong Kong has a population of 16,469 people per square mile. That is a lot of people. And sometimes it feels like the entire population is located in Mong Kok. Mong Kok is a subway station neighborhood in Kowloon Island. It really is the densest and craziest place. So if you like craziness, you like lots of people, you like lots of activity, you will love Hong Kong. And actually, Mong Kok, it's so crowded. 
it gained uh, a place in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the most crowded shopping district in the world. That is right. And, uh, but I'll say that, you know, the craziness, in my mind, Hong Kong is what, like, New York City could be. And it's what San Francisco should be. I mean, what I like about Hong Kong, it's crazy, but it's fairly clean and it's fairly orderly. Their transportation system works well. I can't really say the same thing for New York City and San Francisco. I'm sorry, great American cities that I love very much, but Hong Kong frankly gets the busyness and craziness a lot better and just the flow through the city. Uh, and also, pedestrian traffic is prioritized. Um, and so, Let's see, uh, if we take a look at this picture here, right? This is like a typical street scene in Hong Kong, that busiest shopping center, but the sidewalks are wide. And in Hong Kong, I never really felt like I was gonna get run over. And so as a pedestrian, it's just nice to be able to walk around. And um, those bridges that I showed earlier, which was uh, right here in this video, right? The, Hong Kong has all of these second story bridges. So you can walk around a lot of the city without ever having to cross any streets, kind of like Las Vegas a little bit on steroids. Um, all right, and uh, AJ Gutierrez says Hong Kong Island and Kowloon are like Manhattan and Brooklyn. One is business oriented and very global, while the other is more classic looking. I would agree with that statement. That's a pretty good description of them. Jake McShane asks, in your experience, do they speak English everywhere? Um, so that's an interesting way to phrase that question. I would not say that they speak English everywhere. I would say because like Cantonese really is the primary language. Most people in Hong Kong, Cantonese is their primary language, but certainly if you're going to restaurants, you're going to shops, there will be people that will speak English. If you speak English as your primary language, I don't think you're gonna have any issue getting around Hong Kong at all, though you'll find that Cantonese is the main language they speak, which is sort of interesting if you're a Mandarin speaker, uh, an OC girl, her primary language is Mandarin, and they don't like Mandarin so much. Actually, they would prefer English before Cantonese, typically. They sort of look at Mandarin, people who are speaking Mandarin, and are like, why are you speaking a language that we don't speak here? Uh, Journal Wright says, is it better to stay in a chain hotel or rent an Airbnb in Hong Kong? Uh, so let's see, my perspective on Airbnbs, I don't stay in them. I always stay at hotels. Uh, I like hotels because I like to know that that hotel, it's there, it's a business, it has a reputation. I want to know when I get there, like if my room's broken, they have people to fix it. If it's flooded, they can put me in another room. And an Airbnb, not so much on a lot of those things. So that is just why I don't like Airbnbs in general. Um, Kashuk Debnath asks, hello, where is the best family budget accommodation in Hong Kong? Hmm, that's a good question, and I would say, uh, related to Hong Kong Island and Kowloon, the cheaper hotels are definitely going to be on the Kowloon side. Um, there's probably some Holiday Inns and things like that that you could stay on Nathan Road. Nathan Road is their main street through there. Certainly, if you uh, another option for cheaper accommodations is to stay closer to the airport. Um, the airport is about 15 kilometers outside of the city center. There's like a courtyard or renaissance by Merritt. There's a few hotels over there and those are usually a third of the price of the hotels in the city center. Sure, you have a little bit of a train ride to get in the city, but if you're trying to save money, that's a great way to save money. Uh, Dustin Frey on Facebook asks, how easy is it to navigate around Hong Kong if you only speak English? Well, Dustin, I think I just answered that for Jake McShane. Uh, so I think it's pretty easy. The signs are all in English. You'll find every restaurant will have English menus. They do definitely expect there will be people that speak English and don't speak Chinese there. Um, Greg says he stayed in the smallest Airbnb ever for about 70 bucks in Kowloon. Smallest room I've ever stayed in. Yeah, things can be pretty small. Uh, and so that might be another good reason to stay in a hotel is you'll get like a little more space. Um, AJ Gutierrez says, Hong Kong is the most compact city I've ever been to. It makes Tokyo look more spacious. I would agree with that. Actually, Tokyo is an interesting city because there's parts of Tokyo that are like super, super busy, but there's other parts of Tokyo that have like green space and parks. And in Tokyo, if you get out from the major business districts, I actually find Tokyo to be really relaxed. But Hong Kong, for the most part, is just crazy, crazy busy. If you are looking for some spaces in Hong Kong, that 
that aren't crazy busy. Certainly the peak on top of that island is pretty peaceful. Also the backside of the island um, by Stanley Market is pretty peaceful as well. The MRT or the subway MTR doesn't run back there and so that just generally makes the backside of Hong Kong Island a bit more relaxed and less crowded. Um, James asks, are the trains as crowded uh, in Japan? And H.A. Gutierrez said yes all the time. Um, mm, I don't think they're as crowded as Japan. I mean, the train in Tokyo, they've got people that are like pushing people on the trains. They're not nearly that crowded in Hong Kong, but they are pretty crowded. Um, and Alex agreed on my comment about San Francisco and said that the BART trains are so overpriced. Yeah, BART Bay Area Rapid Transit, that's sort of the subway system in San Francisco. It's really lame. It has like three stops in downtown San Francisco. I mean, you can barely take it anywhere. It's great if you're going from the airport into the city, but that's kind of about it. Um, so uh, AJ uh, made one more point about English speaking and said, um, don't expect the older residents to speak English uh, because they hate the mainland taking over. Yeah, I'm sure there's certainly some people in Hong Kong that do have some resentment about being part of China and all that stuff. And yes, I would agree that uh, the younger people there definitely speak more English than the older people. But I find that that's, that's almost like a worldwide trend. I feel like almost anywhere you go in this world, the younger people speak more English than the older people. Um... Yeah, AJ Gutierrez says, uh, Sim Sha Sui has plenty of budget options. Actually, uh, and, and Kashik says, is it safe and okay to stay in the Chungking Mansion or Mirador Mansion? I mean, safe, okay. Yeah, it depends on what that means for you. If you're really looking for something cheap, those places are cheap. They are kind of sketchy. I mean, the Chungking Mansions, it's pretty sketchy. I mean, <clears throat> I don't... Like, I don't know that you'll get hurt or robbed or anything like that, um, but it's just known for kind of, yeah, like a haven of criminal activity, but more like underground criminal activity. Like, if you want to go and get, um, you know, like a burner cell phone or things like that, you go to the Chungking mansions. And it's interesting, this term mansion in Hong Kong. So when, when I think of a mansion in the U.S., I think of like, uh, a 200 room house like something in Beverly Hills or something out in Newport Rhode Island um, but in Hong Kong they use the term mansion to basically describe a really crappy apartment building <laughs> so it's like it has a lot of rooms but they're not rooms in a house they're just like really run down thing and if, if you want to see like some of the scariest wiring ever in Kowloon around the Chungking mansions go down some of those back alleys and you know um, so, uh, let's see, uh, Elliot asked, where is Topher? Topher, he's recovering from our lots of travels. We did Bangkok, Thailand, we did Hong Kong, and we did Macau, and so he's pretty tired. He's got to have his beauty rest. Uh, Dana says, first time I've seen you live. Thanks for joining, Dana. Appreciate it. Uh, Matthew asked, when are you and Topher going to the Philippines? I don't know. Not any immediate plans to, but we would certainly love to. Um, Trisha says, what is the nightlife like in Hong Kong? Yeah, Trisha, I, I don't know that Hong Kong has like a huge nightlife if you consider nightlife to be, um, you know, bars or drinking or things like that. The, mm, I'd say their biggest night, like they like to eat. Like I feel like people in Hong Kong, they love to eat. And um, there is kind of an area of international nightlife on Hong Kong Island called Lan Kwai Fong. Um, so that's where a lot of the bars would be, a lot of the international restaurants. But they would definitely be of smaller size because everything in Hong Kong is small. There's not like any big nightclubs or anything of that sort. Uh, Alonzo says, um, what area should I stay away from while visiting Hong Kong? Um... Yeah, I think that, uh, I think the Chungking Mansions, maybe. I mean, if I was telling people where to stay away from, I haven't really felt that any areas of Hong Kong were awful, at least not any areas that I've found personally. It's not like, you know, I tell you if you're coming to Los Angeles, you know, stay away from, like, Skid Row, certainly, but, uh, I never, I didn't feel the same way about Hong Kong. Um, Journal Wright says, is Hong Kong a huge culture shock in comparison to mainland China or Macau? Um, I might... I don't know. I might say the reverse, actually. I feel like Hong Kong, it's kind of westernized, right? Because it was a British colony and certainly coming as an American. A lot of things in Hong Kong, like it's east meets west. And so a lot of things are familiar. Um, I think mainland China is, is 
more of a culture shock as compared to Hong Kong. Like in Hong Kong, people wait in a little more orderly fashion by the subway. Mainland China, not so much. Uh, I think one of the things to get used to in mainland China is people spitting, right? Like people giving like a and like spitting places. And you don't really see that as much in Hong Kong, but in mainland China, it's all the time. Guys, girls, kids, old people, young people, right? It's, it's just sort of okay to do. Um, but in Hong Kong, it's sort of like, it's not okay to do, which, hey, different strokes for different folks in different places. Uh, Greg says, can't remember the name, but there was a good little Hong Kong history museum we went for a couple of hours. Yeah, I don't think I've been to that, Greg. That's interesting. Um, so, yeah, AJ was saying that Chungking Mansions I talked to, like, it's okay to go to, just don't talk to the vendors because the vendors are probably kind of sketchy. They probably are. Uh, Gaming Paradise says, go to Ocean Park and make a video, please. Gaming Paradise Maybe next time I go to Hong Kong. Unfortunately, I'm back on this trip, so that probably won't happen for a little while. Uh, Mick Wee says, can you give a shout out to my wife, CC Yi? Love the videos. CC Yi, thanks for joining. Shout out to you. Um, Dustin Frey says, what is a must do in Hong Kong? That's great. We're going to get to that. Probably number 10, I think, is one of my must-dos, but certainly in number four. Well, actually, let's just get to number four so we talk about what that must-do is. So number four is the food. Number four is food. The fourth reason to visit Hong Kong is for the food. The food is amazing, and in particular, this is a must-do. You must eat dim sum in Hong Kong. Dim sum, sometimes called yum cha, uh, originated in southern China but really has been perfected in Hong Kong. And uh, so dim sum, if you're not familiar with dim sum, basically it's these restaurants, uh, typically it's a lunchtime thing, and they serve kind of small bites, like little dumplings, isn't that? Typically in steam baskets that are pushed around on carts. And these people in carts come by, you look in the carts, you see what's in there, you pick up these steam baskets, or they put them on your table, you get a little card, they stamp it, and then based on how many stamps you have, then that's how they decide how much you pay. I love dim sum. My favorite dim sum, dim sum restaurant in Hong Kong is Maxim's Palace at City Hall. Yes, in Hong Kong City Hall, they have a very impressive dim sum restaurant. And this dim sum restaurant, there's a picture of some of the dim sum right there if you're on YouTube. Uh, we've got some pork buns, we've got some rice and a lotus leaf, we've got some custard buns, um, like shumai, which are shrimp dumplings. Uh, I just love dim sum. And again, because they have a dim sum restaurant in their city hall, you know they love dim sum. But what was really neat at Maxim's Palace, my favorite dim sum restaurant, if you have to go to one and only one, go to Maxim's Palace. We waited an hour on a Saturday. We got there at like 10.30 in the morning and still had to wait an hour, but it was totally worth it. It was that good. They have these like really neat chandeliers and it's just like this amazing experience. Um, and then after you've eaten dim sum, then go eat more dim sum, frankly. Uh, a very interesting dim sum experience. We didn't do it on this trip, but I did it on a previous trip. We ate at the dim sum restaurant that's at in the Four Seasons Hotel. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's um, there's one Chinese restaurant there. It is a three-star Michelin Chinese restaurant. And when we went there, they looked at me, and, and I was wearing shorts, and they're like, sir, um, is your hotel nearby? Do you, could you maybe change into some pants? And I'm like, oh, I'm, no, I'm like, my hotel's pretty far away. We had a reservation. We wouldn't make it back in time for lunch. And they're like, hmm, what size pants do you wear? And I told them my pant size. They walked in the back, came back with some Four Seasons pants in a bag and said, sir, you can change over there. And once you've changed, you're, you're welcome to come into the restaurant. I have literally never been to a restaurant where I've been given pants to wear. And then people always ask the question, uh, did you get to keep the pants? Uh, no, I had to give the pants back. Uh, and they were they were definitely like Hong Kong size. So when I told them my size, I probably should have like upsized a couple inches, you know, instead of that American vanity sizing. Um, some other great things to eat in Hong Kong, uh, roast goose is very famous, um, wonton noodle soup, so soup with noodles and wontons together in it. Um, we talked about street food earlier, but street food in Central, street food in Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is home to lots of Michelin-starred restaurants, so you can eat at the low end and you can eat at the high end. Uh, 
duck roast beets. You know, you'll be walking around Hong Kong and see these restaurants that just have like the ducks hanging in the window and the pork hanging in the window. And you're like, that looks good. Let me go in and get some of that. Uh, Janko on Facebook says, I loved Hong Kong. Surprisingly, definitely the Big Buddha and the Temple Baya. Yes, I will be talking about the Big Buddha in one of my future numbers. That is a must do as well. I love the Big Buddha. Um, Greg said, uh, found the ladies in Japan much sweeter than the ladies in Hong Kong. Yeah, I think that's a culture thing. Um, you know, and I think in Japan, they're sort of taught to cater to others and about the customer experience. Um, Hong Kong, it's a little bit more like New York City. We're sort of like, everybody's into themselves. Though I will say the high-end restaurants, and here, here's a big joke about dim sum. Like, even at the high-end dim sum restaurants, like, if the waiter's walking by and you're like, hey, can I get some soy sauce? What a dim sum waiter, I feel like they're trained to do, is not acknowledge that you spoke to them at all. They just keep walking. But some soy sauce may come back, you know? And so that's, a, that's just kind of an interesting thing. Also, the interesting thing in a dim sum restaurant, when you want a check, um, I told you they, they have these cards that they stamp. These are socks, not a card. But when you're ready, you just hold your card up in the air. You just hold it up like this. And after you're holding it up like this, somebody will see you have the card, and then they'll come and take it and bring you a bill. But at Maxim's, it took us 10 minutes, I think, to get our bill, right? Like that prompt service isn't really what they're into all that much. Um... So, let's see, some questions. Um, all right, we talked about what kind of food is popular. Uh, Ali says, hi from New Zealand. Hi, James says, what time do the restaurants close or are they 24-7? Hong Kong is kind of a 24-7 place. The restaurants close pretty late, but 10 p.m. maybe for like standard restaurants, like the cafes and things like that, they, they might actually go late into the night. Um, Hong Kong's kind of a late morning place to open. Their shops and things like that don't open super early. 11, maybe noon, maybe even 1 p.m. some shops might open because uh, people aren't out that early in the morning. Um, Journal writes, is in your opinion, what's the minimum amount of spending money that one should have to vacation in Hong Kong? That's a really hard question, Journal. Um, it depends how much you like to spend, how much you're going to buy, where are you going to go? I mean, I, I feel like as to the price comparison, a week in Bangkok, we spent like $300 of cash. In Hong Kong, we spent $300 in like two days. So Hong Kong can be a lot more expensive. Uh, there was a question of, um, is dim sum more expensive in Hong Kong than it is in Southern California? I think like at Maxim City Hall, like for two people, it was about 60 US dollars, which say like in San Diego prices is, is maybe kind of similar. Um, certainly the high-end restaurants can be more expensive. I mean, the lower restaurants can be way cheaper. I'll say frankly, Hong Kong locals probably don't go to these like grand Michelin star dim sum restaurants. They go to these like local cafes that just have like a stack of bamboo steamers right by the door. And in that case, that dim sum will be like way cheaper. Um, Austin Challenges said, how different are the fast food restaurants in Hong Kong than they are in California? McDonald's, Burger King. Um, you know, Austin, I, like, I'd really try not to eat at the Western or American fast food restaurants uh, and try to stick to like local foods. Um, Hong Kong has a couple of chains. One's called like Cafe de Coral. Um, there's another one that I, I can't remember the name of, but they're sort of like these Cantonese fast food chains. And so these places are all about, uh, like basically roast meat and rice. So you go and you see the roast meats that are hanging. You say, I want the barbecue pork or I want the duck. They chop it off, give you some rice, maybe some soup. Oh, you go there for breakfast. Maybe you get some congee, you get some soy milk. Uh, and so very different, but I definitely encourage you if you're in Hong Kong, go to the local Cantonese fast food places and Skip the Western fast food places. Um, on Facebook, uh, Judy says, how long do people usually stay in Hong Kong? Thanks for your videos on Maui. Great tips. We went in September. Awesome, Judy. I'm glad to hear you enjoyed Maui. Um, how long do people stay in Hong Kong? I, I mean, it depends how long you want to stay. Uh, this trip, uh, we spent kind of like three full days in Hong Kong. I mean, that works out to like five days because there's an arrival day and a departure day. We spent two days in Hong Kong and then we spent um, one day in Macau. Uh, previous trips I've been to Hong Kong, I've been there for five days. I think you could spend a week in Hong Kong. I mean, I find that there's a lot of stuff to do in Hong Kong, but that's just me. I like to hike, I like to see things, I like to explore. 
Um, you know, some people are bored of it after a couple days. There's also Hong Kong Disneyland. We'll certainly get to that in a future section. Um, Greg says he just got back from India and was amazed how organized the transportation is in Hong Kong compared to uh, Varanasi. I bet. Yeah, Hong Kong has pretty good transportation. Annie asks, when's the best time to travel to Hong Kong? I think this time of year is pretty good. I think spring and fall are pretty good times to go. So like April, October, November. Hong Kong can be really hot and humid in the summer. I think even in December, January, it's good because it, it just it never gets really cold there. Uh, Greg says he was amazed at how Hong Kong used the huge buses and uh, drove them like sports cars. They know how to move people. Yeah, like most of the buses in Hong Kong are these double-decker buses, and they move around the city pretty effortlessly, it seems like. Uh, and Greg says, when do the locals go out to eat in Hong Kong? Hmm, I would say lunch is probably about 1 p.m. and then dinners, you know, between 7 and 8 p.m., uh, sort of like later in the time frame. Um, let's see, um, AJ says the food in Hong Kong is cheaper compared to San Francisco. I think it depends, like, whether you're going to the high-end stuff or not. I mean, if you're going to the really high-end stuff in Hong Kong, it can be pretty darn expensive. Grovel made it to the stream. Welcome, Grovel. Um, AJ Gutierrez says, uh, you know, I guess one issue, one problem. The metros close by midnight, just like other metros around the world, which is unfortunate because in New York City, they're open 24-7. That is one advantage of New York City. Um, Trisha asks, what's the best noodles place to eat there? Hmm, I don't know that I have a specific noodles place that I'd recommend. I've eaten a lot of wonton noodles, and they've all been pretty good, frankly. Uh, all right, so let's go on to number five. The fifth reason to go to Hong Kong is for the tea. So I spent a whole bunch of time talking about dim sum, and if you're eating dim sum, well, you need to drink the tea. And the tea in Hong Kong at dim sum restaurants, way better than the tea at dim sum restaurants in the U.S. Yes, and um, Chinese restaurants, uh, you know, the kind of the joke is they serve food with their tea. Like a lot of times at dim sum, people go there and they're like, they're pretty much just there for the tea. They're drinking the tea. And so many restaurants in Hong Kong, they'll have like a tea charge. I mean, they do that at dim sum restaurants here, but that's because they originate as Hong Kong restaurants. And so you might be paying, you know, two to three dollars a head just for that teapot and the tea cup. Uh, and often in Hong Kong, you will have, um, two pots that'll come to the table, one pot that will have the tea, the hot tea in it, and another pot that will have hot water. And so if you need to fill up the tea or to dilute it a bit, you have a pitcher of hot water to fill in the tea pot. Uh, oftentimes, you'll also get like a little candle that they'll put the teapot on to keep the tea nice and hot and warm because nobody likes cold tea. Uh, another famous thing to drink in Hong Kong is Hong Kong milk tea. So if you've had like Taiwanese boba tea or Thai tea or things like that, Hong Kong tea is its own iced tea milk variant. Um, it's very strong. It's very sweet. Uh, and I'll just say you have to try it. You haven't been to Hong Kong until you have had Hong Kong milk tea. Uh, and at dim sum, we just, we drink so much tea. And then of course you have, you have to go pee after you drink all that tea. But the good news in Hong Kong, there's plenty of public restrooms, restrooms and hotels. So relieving your bladder is not that much of an issue. Question on Facebook, um, from Annie, transportation, is it the same like in Japan? I just got back from Japan. I loved it. Annie is pretty good in Hong Kong, I must say. I'll be talking about the transportation number seven, uh, so hold that for one point. Sam asks, are there any takoyaki in Hong Kong? Takoyaki are like octopus balls, um, big Japanese food. I'm sure you could find some in Hong Kong, but it's definitely not a big Hong Kong food like it is in Japan. Um, AJ answered the how long do you have to be there thing and he said I stayed a week and it wasn't enough for me so yeah you can be there for a long time um, Remy asks, how's the underground fighting scene in Hong Kong I don't know Remy it's probably too underground for me to to know what's going on or know about it um, CC asks did you experience Hong Kong Disneyland if so how did you like it I have not been to Hong Kong Disneyland but I'm curious anybody on have you been to Hong Kong Disneyland what did you think of it um, Sam Robinson asks, is seafood cheaper in Hong Kong than in the USA? Mm, I think it's a pretty similar price, Sam, honestly. Uh, now, Bangkok, Thailand, which we were the week before, seafood was way cheaper in Bangkok than it is 
uh, in the U.S., uh, but I think the seafood in Hong Kong is pretty similar. Mr. Pickles joined in. Mr. Pickles says he's sorry he's late, but Mr. Pickles, ah, it's awesome. Uh, it's awesome you're here at all, so thanks for joining. It's awesome you all are here on the stream, frankly. Um, let's see. Uh, CC says, can you drink beer in the streets? Hmm. You know, I want to answer off a gut feel and say yes, uh, but I'm not sure that that's the exact answer to it. I, I feel like Hong Kong locals aren't really huge beer drinkers, right? Like the beer that's drank in Hong Kong, I feel is definitely much more like Westerners that are there drinking beer. Like Japan, they love their beer. Hong Kong, they love their tea, really. That's what, that's what like Hong Kong uh, locals will likely be drinking. Pierre says, can I find garbage cans in Hong Kong? There are lots of garbage cans in Hong Kong. Hong Kong does not have that same problem of Japan of no garbage cans. Mm. <clears throat> Gaming Paradise says, do you know that before you eat dim sum, they use tea to wash the plate and cups before use? Mm, I'm not sure that every dim sum restaurant does, but yes, uh, some do. Um, and uh, Dana says, uh, Hong Kong Disney was great with two young children smaller than Anaheim. Interesting. Dana, how did you find the, uh, the English in Hong Kong Disneyland? And Katya says, how pricey is Hong Kong in general? Mm, Hong Kong is pricey. Hong Kong is like a big world city. So similar pricing in Hong Kong as if you were going to New York City, Paris, London, LA, San Francisco, New York City. It is not a cheap place to go. I will say that. Um, I mean, you certainly can be cheap, but you'll be staying in like really tiny places and not eating super delicious food. So uh, I think Hong Kong isn't really a place that you want to go to looking for that like Thailand cheap vacation. All right, but so now hotels. The sixth reason to go to Hong Kong is for the hotels. Hong Kong has some of my favorite hotels anywhere. A hotel that has a little special place in my heart is the JW Marriott Hong Kong. Um, you know, when I do the Topher ratings for hotels, well, I mean, it's Topher that does the Topher ratings for hotels, but JW Marriott Hong Kong is one that goes down in our history as having a five Topher rating. Um, they've recently changed their lounge a little bit. We stayed there this time. We'll probably give them four and a half Tophers, but that's a really high Topher rating for us. The lounge at the JW Marriott is like one of the best Marriott lounges anywhere. You know, like when you go into a hotel like the JW Marriott, there's not just like one doorman opening the door. They've got two doormen opening the door, one on either side. And they're not standing there like waiting for you to grease their palms or something. They just like generally want to provide you good service, which I think is fantastic. Uh, and, you know, like they know how to... Um, bring things quickly, be polite, um, rooms that are clean. Um, you know, another hotel that we really like, it's the Conrad Hong Kong. It's like, it's like right next to the JW Mayor Hong Kong. Conrad is the high-end Hilton hotel. Um, but it's a really nice hotel and, uh, Hong Kong hotels have really great service but you pay for it. The JW Marriott Hong Kong, it's not cheap, right? An average price for the JW Marriott Hong Kong, probably three to 400 US dollars a night. Uh, I always stay there, always stay there on Marriott points, um, which I think if you have some hotel points, those are great things to use when you go to Hong Kong. Uh, Annie says, yes, hotel please, planning to go in the summer. Yeah, so those would be some of my recommendations. There's a renaissance, there's some other ones. I mean, they don't have to be that expensive. Those are just some great ones. And if you have points, those are good to use. I'm gonna have a whole video coming up in a couple weeks about some of the best credit cards to use for traveling. Uh, and so often people ask me like, Chris, again, how do you afford these things? And the answer I say is, because I don't pay for them because I use Marriott points and Hyatt points and Hilton points and Ultima Rewards points and United Miles. And so stay tuned for that video coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you want to explore some of those credit cards, definitely U.S. folks uh, for that one because um, they're U.S.-based credit cards. Uh, Sam Robinson says, is it hard to travel to Beijing from Hong Kong? Sam, I think you got two real options. One, you can take a flight. It's probably an hour and a half, probably not that long. Or you can take the new high-speed rail. It's eight hours uh, from Hong Kong on the high-speed rail to Beijing. Um, Joshua Pickle says, when Marriott upgrade all of the gold members to platinum this year, does that expire on December 31st or January 31st like normally? I would assume January 31st. That would make sense since that's typically when it expires. I, I'm not sure, but that would just be my gut feeling. Um, Topher asks, if, is Hong Kong accommodating to people with disabilities? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, 
I feel like the MRT, the MTR, the subway has a lot of disabled access and things like that. Uh, they have a lot of the bing, 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 like the beeping things to cross the intersections. A lot of things for blind people to walk on. So mm, Hong Kong more so than Bangkok, probably. Um, let's see. Uh, Dana Pierce says English was about five years ago. I remember being surprised that English wasn't as good as expected everywhere in Hong Kong. I mean, it's not everywhere, but I think it's pretty good. Certainly, if you go some places in the mainland China, Hong Kong is way better. Um, Remy D says, how's the tipping culture in Hong Kong? Do people expect tips? Kind of. It's an interesting tipping culture. So, like, if you're at a restaurant um, and you pay with cash and they bring you the change, they don't, like, leave it at your table. They bring you the change in a little holder like this, and they'll hold the change out in front of you. And what they're basically expecting you to do is take what you want and then leave what you want them to have, and they take it right away. Uh, and it's typically one of those, like, round up a few dollars or the change or things like that. The exchange rate is one Hong Kong... One U.S. dollar to eight Hong Kong dollars. That's the exchange rate. It's basically pegged at that rate. The Hong Kong dollar is pegged to the U.S. dollar. Um, and so, you know, it might be like leave 10 Hong Kong dollars or something if your bill was, you know, right, 30 U.S. dollars. I mean, it's kind of like one of those like roundup type situations. The taxis will generally give you exact change back. In general, they don't expect a lot of tips in Hong Kong. Just kind of that like, hey, just leave your extra change. Um, Gaming Paradise says, for hotels, I stayed in Dorset, Wan Chai. You should try that hotel next time. They even have free bus transport. All right, I'll consider that Gaming Paradise. Uh, Devin Duncan says, how are the lounges in the Hong Kong airports? Mm. I think pretty good. Um, we went to the Singapore Lounge in Hong Kong Airport. The Singapore Lounge was pretty nice. It's small. It didn't have a lot of view, but they had dim sum. The food offerings are pretty good. I will say in Bangkok, the Thai Airways Lounge was like epic. Uh, and so the Hong Kong lounges are good. I mean, one that I've really heard great things about um, but I don't go to it because I don't fly Cathay Pacific, is the Cathay Pacific Lounge. The Cathay Pacific Lounge in Hong Kong airports definitely regarded as one of those, like, best lounges anywhere. Uh, so I'm hoping to try that someday, but I haven't been there yet. Irene says, which food do you eat in Hong Kong? Irene, that was, uh, that was number four, um, so I'll encourage you for my whole diatribe to go back and check that out in the archive. But dim sum, I love dim sum. That's the answer. Um, and uh, Gaming Paradise is for travelers that stay in Hong Kong, recommend you guys buy their Octopus card. The Octopus card is the um, stored value card for their subway. And yes, I'd recommend that. I mean, pretty much any city that has a stored value card, I recommend that for transportation instead of having to buy tickets. Uh, so let's talk about... Um, well, hey, I forgot to I forgot to play this little clip. Hey, but this is a clip about hotels, and I think what's neat about hotels is that the hotels they're like really tall, and so you can get like really great views. Uh, that's a nice thing about the Conrad, the JW Marriott, the Ritz Carlton, the Four Seasons. Certainly, you're gonna pay more for your view, but some of those views are super amazing and reasons to stay in the room alone. All right, the seventh reason to go to Hong Kong is for great public transportation. Yes, the transportation's great, particularly the Ding Ding. It's the Hong Kong tram. It is famous, and the Ding Ding, it runs uh, on Hong Kong Island. Why do they call it Ding Ding? Well, because it has this bell that goes Ding Ding, Ding Ding. Um, it's like the equivalent. It's like just a few Hong Kong dollars to ride, so like 30 cents or something. I mean, it's super cheap. You pay when you get on. It's as long as you want to ride. I mean, it's not the fastest way to get around, but it's this two-story thing, and so you can really get great views of Hong Kong Island riding the Ding Ding. But I'll say the public transportation in Hong Kong, yeah, it starts with Hong Kong Airport. Hong Kong Airport is really nice. It's built on the man-made island of uh, Lantau Island. They built out this man-made area of it. It's big, it's huge, it's spacious. Um, Mr. Pickles comments and he says he likes um, checking in luggage in town at the train station on the way to the airport. Yeah, this is really nice. And so um, they have this train that runs from Hong Kong airport to Central Station. It is 24 minutes from 
um, Hong Kong Airport to Central Station. The train runs every like 15 to 20 minutes. It's pretty often. And then when you're going to the airport, you can check out of your hotel, go to the train station. There are airline counters at the train station and you can check in your luggage at those airline counters often say six to eight hours before your flight. So you can check out of your hotel, check your luggage in, explore the city for a couple more hours before taking that airport train to the airport. You don't have your luggage anymore more you just have your boarding pass and so that that is pretty neat i will say we got a little bit hosed by that one uh oc girl she got the special 4s boarding pass which is the special security screening boarding pass coming into the u.s and so with that they were like mm, we can't check her luggage but they could check my luggage and they could check three pieces of my luggage so guess guess who checked in all the luggage <laughs> that was but if you were by yourself that would just sort of be like but I already checked out of my hotel, and what do I do with all this luggage? So just be prepared for that potential uh, thing to happen. Um, but that's probably more of a US TSA issue, really, than it is a Hong Kong issue. And Amy's joined in on Facebook and says, Hi, Chris, I actually get to see you live. That's fantastic, Amy. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad, glad you get to see me live. You know that I actually do these live, and they aren't just fake live streams that end up archived sometimes. Yes, Mr. Pickle says the SSS boarding pass is so special. Um, Ron says, uh, are there any big public libraries in Hong Kong? Hmm, I'm not sure, Ron. I haven't been into any. Um, that doesn't mean they aren't there. That's just, I don't really frequent libraries when I go on travel. Um, Elliot says, how can people cross the street in front of the streetcar without getting electrocuted like would happen on subway rails? Yeah, because the streetcar, um, it's not electrified on the rails, it's electrified on the top. So it connects on the top, not on the bottom. Um, let's see, I got a transportation one. All right, so right here, this picture on YouTube is of the Star Ferry. It's one of the classic transportation options too. There's this ferry that goes back and forth from uh, Kowloon to Hong Kong Island. It's another one of these things that makes the trip every 10 minutes. It's usually green. This is a colorful one, um, but it's one of those classic transportation things too. You just like have to take it if you're going to Hong Kong. It's pretty fun. And it's like two to three Hong Kong dollars. So it's like 30 cents to ride. It's like two Hong Kong dollars if you're on the bottom deck or three Hong Kong dollars if you're on the top deck. Costs you a little more because the view's a little nicer and it's a little more stable up there. Um, their subway is amazing. They call it the MTR, um, but like all the stations have... Um, the security doors, so the track is not open. You, you can't fall on the track. You can't drop trash in the track. The, the rats can't run in there. Well, maybe the rats can run in there, but the rats can't run from there onto the platforms. The double-decker buses are amazing. Someone mentioned this earlier. All of their buses are these two-story buses, uh, and if you're going like to the backside, like Stanley Market with these curvy roads, it's really neat to sit on the second level of this bus right in front at the glass windows. It's just this cool way to see Hong Kong go by, uh, and, and then, of course, the ding-ding. I, I love the transport there. Um, let's see, uh, Katia says, too bad I have to go to sleep. It's 4.40 a.m. here in Portugal. I was enjoying the video as I always do. Cheers to you and everybody watching and a big hug to Topher. Bye. Good night, Katia. That is really early. You stayed up late. So thanks for being so dedicated to watch. Um, Cece says, did you experience the beach? Any recommendations or was it just the city? I have never been to the beach in Hong Kong. Originally from San Diego, California, which has some pretty great beaches. I don't know that Hong Kong has beaches that are that great. I mean, there are some beaches that are known for being nice. You have to, like, hike a while to them. I, I don't really want to hike to go to the beach, frankly. I, like, if I go to the beach, I like to, like, park or have my, like, hotel, like, right in front of the beach. Uh, that's just my perspective. Um, Dustin says, is there a lot of free Wi-Fi, if any? Hmm. I thought there's a decent amount of free Wi-Fi. Starbucks certainly had free Wi-Fi. Um, Annie Nguyen says, could you please let us know which airline to fly to Hong Kong? If you have to pick one, I would say Cathay Pacific. Annie is probably one of the best airlines to take there. Cathay Pacific is known as being a really great airline. Certainly depends where you're flying from, uh, but that's a pretty good bet because uh, it's uh, sort of like a Hong Kong airport's main carrier is Cathay Pacific. Uh, Luis says, the hop-on, hop-off buses take you to the beach. Well, Luis, you've been to the beach. What do you think about the beach? I'm curious. You could probably answer CC's question. Um, T. Frake says, 
anywhere else in China, how much was the visa to Hong Kong? Um, from the US, uh, no visas are required to go to Hong Kong, no visas are required to go to Macau, um, visas are only required from the US to China if you're going into mainland China for something like more than two days, there's like some limit, uh, and then in that case, I think those visas cost somewhere around $50 or something like that. All right, the eighth reason to go to Hong Kong is for the neon signs. Yes, that's right. Hong Kong has lots of neon signs. They got neon everywhere. They're famous for putting their signs right into the middle of the street, like the middle of the street, like right over the street. Very few places in the world that do this. It's really cool. It's really neat to get these shots off the second story bridges, see these neon signs. Um, and uh, they're often known as a lot of them being in Kowloon and Mong Kok, um, but there's also a lot on Hong Kong Island in Central, near the Central Mid-Levels Escalator, uh, and then also in Wan Chai. Those are great places to take pictures with those neon signs and just see that classic, like, bl you know, Blade Runner made it famous with the people sitting by the noodle cart in Blade Runner, you know, the year was what, 2049, or, or was it like 2017? <laughs> I don't know. Some far off future at the time they made that uh, movie, but it's cool to just see it yourself. Um, all right. The ninth reason to go to Hong Kong is for the escalator. Yes, that's right, for the escalator. The central mid-levels escalator, it is the longest escalator in the world. And so, um, why do they have this really long escalator? Well, as I mentioned before, Hong Kong Island, right, it's this big tall island. It's built on this mountain and those buildings, as they go towards the mountain, they get kind of, they're like up the mountain. And so people who are commuting into work, they're going downhill to central to go to work on Hong Kong Island. And then when they go back home, they have to go all the way up this hill. And so the subway doesn't really run in that direction. It doesn't really run uphill, it kind of runs along the sides of the island. And so because of that, um, they have the world's longest escalator. It's it's one way. So in the morning, the escalator goes downhill from like 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then for 20 minutes, it stops and then reverses direction and then goes uphill for the remainder of the day. So people can commute downhill on this escalator. And then when they go home, they can commute uphill. It's free. It's neat. And it's just one of those like you have to experience it to go on this escalator for like a 20 minute ride. <laughs> it's technically not one continuous escalator. It's a lot of different little escalator sections, but pretty cool. All right, the tenth reason to go to Hong Kong is to see the Big Buddha and the cable car. This is on Lantau Island. It's near the airport. Um, it's literally the name of it. It's called the Big Buddha, and there's this monastery there, the Poland Monastery. Um, here's some Buddhas that are near there. Those aren't actually the big Buddha. The big Buddha looks kind of like this. It's a really big Buddha. And it's like one of the longest cable car stretches in the world. It's like a 20 minute cable car stretch. It's pretty fun. Um, if you like temples, if you like Buddhas, if you like climbing stairs, if you like views, it's a must do. It's like a good half day to do that. Um, and, uh, but if you like, again, cable car, I got a whole video on the big Buddha and the cable car. Find the link in the description below to check that out. All right, the 11th reason to go to Hong Kong is for the jumbo. Uh, the jumbo uh, and uh, is this um, boat uh, in Aberdeen, which is on the backside of Hong Kong Island. It's a floating restaurant. In Hong Kong, there used to be a lot more of these floating restaurants, floating casinos. Why? It was hard to buy land, hard to get permits, but anybody could just bring a boat in the harbor and do whatever the heck they want to because they're on the water. And so this is one of the few left, but it's like this grand looking boat and it's moored in the middle of the harbor. And so to eat on this boat, to go there, you have to take a boat to the boat. I think it's just sort of interesting to have to take a boat to a boat to eat. Uh, and I do also have a video on the jumbo. You'll find that in the Hong Kong playlist below, or you can find it in the card. Um, the 12th reason to go to Hong Kong is to take a day trip to Macau. Um, Macau, I mentioned a little bit earlier, 
former Portuguese colony. It's like the Las Vegas of the East. Um, you can get there from a one hour ferry ride from Hong Kong, uh, or they actually just built this bridge um, that would take about an hour by bus. The bridge isn't really convenient for tourists because the bridge runs from Hong Kong airport, and so it's kind of inconvenient to get to it. If you're staying in Central or you're staying in Kowloon, the best way to get to Macau is to take the ferry. Um, I'll have more videos about Macau coming up. I have a Macau travel guide in that Hong Kong playlist, so if you want to know more about Macau, you can check that out. Um, Devin Duncan says, do you recommend that I go to Bangkok or Hong Kong? Devin, it depends what you want. Um, I don't know, if you haven't been to either, like I think Hong Kong is a really neat city to go to and kind of one of those must places to go. I'd probably go to Hong Kong before I go to Bangkok, but Bangkok is cool too. Also depends how much money you have, right? If you're if you're broke and you want someplace really cheap, you should go to Bangkok because it is way cheaper. Um, Dana says that uh, she recommends the Great Free Zoo up the hill, including flamingos. Um, cool. Yeah, I think I've walked through some of that zoo, which is kind of interesting. I love they they have like a like a bird sanctuary there. Um, Jake McShane says. Uh, if making your first visit, would you recommend staying in Kowloon or would you recommend staying in Hong Kong Island? I like to stay in Hong Kong Island. Kowloon's a little too crazy for me. There's too many people. I like a little bit of the more peacefulness and serenity of Hong Kong Island. Uh, and so I'd recommend staying someplace near Central because then you're not very far from the airport train that just comes right into Central Station. That's my recommendation. The 13th reason to go to Hong Kong is for Hong Kong Disneyland. Someone mentioned earlier, but if you're trying to hit up all the Disney theme parks, well, one of them is in Hong Kong. I have not been there. I'd like to sometime, but just I haven't been able to fit it in on my trips and frankly there's been so many other things to do in Hong Kong I have not made it there. The 14th reason to go to Hong Kong is for horse racing. Horse racing. Yes, um, horse racing happens all year round in Hong Kong. It is Horse racing is more popular in Hong Kong than it is anywhere in the world. Um, twice a week Wednesday and Sunday at Happy Valley and Sha Tin. They're two different racetracks. I think the bleachers or the grandstands at Sha Tin hold like 120,000 people. I mean, it's, wow, it's amazing how many people go see these horse races. They have satellite betting all throughout Hong Kong. It's, it's a whole thing in and of itself. So if you like horse racing, you'll love Hong Kong because there's so much horse racing. Um... Yippee asks, how's the pollution in Hong Kong for walking around? Yeah, Hong Kong is not very polluted, really. Because it's an island and there's a lot of water, it's not polluted. The Kowloon side can be a little polluted. I mean, there's some pollution that comes in from mainland China, but I feel like because it's so close to the water, the air is pretty good in Hong Kong. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Uh, there was a question about what events happen in Macau. Um, the biggest event is like the Formula One racing. Like there was the races were recently there, um, but that's kind of the big thing that happened there. There's gambling in Macau. That's one of the big things. Um, but the reason to go to Macau is to visit the old Portuguese center because it was a Portuguese colony. There's actually a part of Macau that like really feels like like Old Town Lisbon or something like that. It's from like the cobbled stone street to the old churches to things like that. Uh, but also it's got these really high-end casino hotels. Uh, and so there's kind of two different things to almost go see. Thanks for like someone just gave me lots of hearts and likes on Facebook. I'm guessing that's Ah Clement. So Ah Clement, thanks for joining in from Singapore. Um, all right. And uh, AJ uh, responds to Hong Kong Disneyland and says, I hear it's underwhelming. If you've been to one, the one in Hong Kong doesn't offer anything new. All right. Well, only for the diehard Disneyers. So um, Mr. Pickle says he was in Hong Kong in January and the pollution was horrendous. Oh, that's too bad, Mr. Pickles. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, and I, I love to see all these hearts continuing to go up there. So thank you for whoever's dropping all the hearts and the likes into the Facebook. All right, so before I go to number 15, it's time for the giveaway. Dun, dun, dun. So this new thing I'm doing, I started last week every live stream. I'm going to be giving away something. Today I'm giving away another pair of these yellow production socks. So if you want to win these yellow production socks, you have to answer my question. This is how it's always going to work. You have to answer a question. And it's something I said in the live stream. My question is, what 
is my favorite dim sum restaurant in Hong Kong? What is the name of my favorite dim sum restaurant in Hong Kong? The first person to answer the question of what is my favorite dim sum restaurant in Hong Kong will win this pair. Well, not this pair because I've worn this pair, but a shiny new pair of yellow productions socks. Uh, Pierre says these are some great socks. They are great socks. They're interesting because they're white socks where they print that and then they're black socks at the bottom. So they're pretty unique socks, I must say. So um, let's see. Pierre said City Hall, but it's got a name. So you're close. What's the name? Ron Martinez, you win. Ron Martinez said it is Maxims. Uh, so uh, Ron Martinez. Um, if you have Facebook, send me a Facebook message. Let me know where you want me to send these socks. If not, uh, you can shoot me an email at chris at yellow.net with two W's, Y-E-L-L-O-W-W.net. Let me know where to send these socks. Um, there were some other of you that got the right answer. Melissa, Alex, Ricky, but you guys were beat by Ron. So Ron, congratulations. All right, I'll be giving away more stuff in the next live stream, uh, but let's go on number 15 before we wrap it up. So 15, the 15th reason to go to Hong Kong is for street markets. There's a lot of street markets in Hong Kong, especially if you like to haggle, you can bargain. You can say this is too expensive, this price isn't good. Some of the best markets, the Temple Street Night Market, the Ladies Market, Sham Shui Po, there's an electronics market, but my favorite market is the goldfish market. There's this street in uh, Kowloon near Mong Kok that um, is, uh, it has all these goldfish. There's like all these stores that sell fish and goldfish. It's just super neat and there is nothing like it in the world. Well, all right, there we have it. 15 reasons that you should visit Hong Kong. Uh, my next live stream is going to be in two weeks. Two weeks. It'll be on December 17th at 8 p.m. This will be a very special live stream because I'll be joined by special guest Ben from Australia. We're going to be talking about a whole bunch of reasons to visit Australia and uh, this new live streaming setup I've got has got a way to like join people into the call so I'll be talking, Ben will be talking from Australia. It'll be a very interesting experiment so I hope the technology works and I'll be giving away I'll be giving away some Yellow Production shirts next time. So if you want your very own Yellow Production shirt, tune in two weeks from now and answer the question I'm going to ask then. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. I appreciated everybody on Facebook, uh, everybody on YouTube. I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video. The next video is this Friday. This Friday coming up, more videos about Bangkok. That's what we got coming up. That's what I'm editing right now. So I'll see you this Friday in the Bangkok video. All right.